everybody excited? Well, if you're not, you will be after today. Yeah. I'm excited. God's mercies are new every morning. Thank you, Lord. That's one of our verses, and uh, the Bible says uh, that only not only is He uh, merciful every morning, it's He us every day. So right now we just praise you and thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, and thank you for today that you're going to reveal more and more truth to us, and we're excited. Thanks for bringing us all together. And uh, we just thank you that right in the middle of all this chaos, confusion, and everything that's going on, that you're our hope, you're our expectation, and you're still who you say you are. You're the same yesterday, today, and forever. So we thank you for your mercy this morning. We thank you for your goodness. So um, we just want to give God thanks. And now we're just going to open with prayer, because, and then we'll go ahead and have some worship today, right, Karen? You're going to do some worship? Yeah. All right. That's awesome. <laughs> All right. So let's open in prayer, and then we'll go right into worship. All right. So, Lord, we just praise you, and we thank you that we can come to you. And we can come to you as Father, and we can come to you as friend. And we thank you, Lord, that we can boldly approach your throne of mercy and grace. And that you are ever-present help in time of need, Lord. We praise you and we lift up your name high. We lift up the name high of Jesus. You're the Prince of Peace and the Great I Am. You're our healer and our deliverer, our baptizer and our savior, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. And we worship you and we exalt you today. Be exalted in every area of our lives. We thank you for a spirit of unity, a spirit of oneness, a spirit of childlike faith. We thank you for your compassion. We thank you for your loving kindness, Lord. I thank you that you draw us with cords of loving kindness time and time and time again, Lord, and that you never leave us, you never forsake us. And you're with us now. Your word says that wherever two or more are gathered, that you're here in our midst. And we thank you, God. We thank you for your presence. We thank you for your anointing. We thank you for the blood which you shed for us. We thank you for all that you took on on the cross. You took on sin, death, poverty all sickness and all disease. And you gave us a totally new, eternal and abundant life to be children called by your name. And we thank you, Lord, that you made a way where we could enter into your presence through the blood and be face to face with the Father. And that we're no longer bound to things on this earth but we are seated with you in heavenly places so lord today we ask you to pour out the spirit of wisdom and revelation knowledge and to open up the eyes of our understanding so that we can see we ask you to take us up higher so we can see the way you see and to take us deeper in your love We thank you for your love for us, Lord. There's nothing so precious as your love for us, Lord. We thank you for the word that's going to come forth, the worship that will come forth. Your word says that we worship you in spirit and in truth. So I thank you that every person will open up hearts and minds to just worship you in your purity, in your majesty, in your holiness, and in all your goodness. You are Lord. And we've come here to love you today and to receive your love for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit mightily upon us. 
each and every person, each and every home, each and every heart and mind. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, so we're here in the presence. Let's just enjoy God and uh, allow him to do what he wants to do today. And we're just going to have a heart of wonder and expectation. Yeah, Lord. And that's how God wants us to be in a posture of just wonder and expectation today. So that's what we're going to believe. And we're going to believe that he's going to do great and mighty things that we don't even know during the time we're together. So we're just believing for that. And I do, especially right before we worship, pray that the refreshment of the Lord comes upon everybody today. Thank you. In a special way of a refreshing, reviving, energizing power to come upon each person all right so let's let's worship let's do a little worship good morning happy sunday morning everybody i hope everybody's doing great um i'm so honored to have begun to be a part of this of this family um pastor dan and sarah are remarkable and i just am so lifted every week by the word and the messages here and i just am so excited to be able to that that this week's message is on worship and um, i just want to say good morning to unite and send love and blessings to you all i'm gonna sing a song that's an old hymn that we probably all know and um if you want to you're on mute so you can sing along at home <laughs> and love and worship What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood. Message me, I'm sorry. Nothing <laughs> but the blood of Jesus. Nothing can for sin atone. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Not a good that I have done. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. for your truth we thank you for your love and your grace and your never-ending understanding of us we are not worthy but we thank you that you believe we are 
Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And one of the things I want to talk about today as we study worship and look at scripture is just how important it is that we have a revelation of, first of all, who we worship. And then second of all, by having that understanding of who he is and what he's done for us, it causes us to want to respond because we really have a true revelation, not just in our spirit, but even our minds as they're renewed. And the Bible says in Psalms 47, we're to praise him with understanding. So when we really understand who we're worshiping and why we're worshiping, it will create a greater substance in our worship and a greater power and a greater presence. So let's look at this familiar scripture that Jesus said. And when I say familiar, I know we may have heard this scripture, but we want to just take a, a strong look at some points here today that I think will happen as we study out today. So in John 4, here Jesus is speaking uh, with the woman at the well. And here, I love this because here Jesus is speaking to a Samaritan woman who has been living a life of sin, who has been in a situation where he is with her and Jews at that time didn't even go to Samaritans or hang out with Samaritans. So Jesus was breaking every rule of the day because his love is far greater for a person and for us than anything we've been involved in. And one of the things we want to do when we set that picture and set that environment up and, and take a look at where things were, it always can remind me and you of Jesus loved us and came for us while we were yet in sin, while we were yet in a difficult place, but Jesus never even held any of that against us because of his great love for us. And he loved us so much. He wanted us to experience not only his love for us, but who he really is to us and what he wants to do for us. So, so I love it that here he is speaking to a person that nobody normally would spend a, even a even the time of day with him. She even had to come during a time of the day where nobody would be there because she had such shame in her life and felt such hurt in her life and such rejection. And maybe some of us could say the same thing. We've come out of shame, maybe hurt, some rejection. Everybody has different backgrounds that you've come out of. I don't know your backgrounds, but you know what? God does. Yeah. And I have good news for you today, no matter where you came out of, what situation you were in, how you were raised, who you're around, what people have tried to do to you, what people have said to you, what circumstances have done to you. I have good news for you today that the Lord loves you and he is invested in you and he really wants you to know that love today. So we're going to talk about that. So I think it's appropriate that when Jesus makes this statement that the woman at the well ask him a question about worship and he starts to define not only the worship that's about to come but the worship that's going to be in our present day and how the father wants us to worship him and how he wants to be worshiped so in john 4 23 it says jesus said to the woman but the hour is coming and now is when the true worshipers will worship the father now it's interesting that Jesus uses the term true worshipers. And so we want to be true worshipers. So if, the, if he's saying there's true worshipers, that means there can be false worshipers. So true and false is a big thing here. So true worshipers are people that are really going to have the revelation and the understanding of who the Father is. And that's what Jesus is trying to say. When you really learn who my father is and who he is you will truly want to worship him for who he is that's a true worshiper yeah. see people can worship a lot of things worship just means what you think about the most and what you value the most what you think about and what you value 
is what you put your focus and attention to. So people can worship their, their gift, they can worship this, they can worship their talent, they can worship their possessions, they can worship uh, all the different things. Uh, they can worship all different type of things. That's not true worship. A true worshiper knows who the Father is, knows what he's done for them, and truly has a revelation of that. And that's what Jesus is saying. And a true worshiper always will think more about the Father, think more about who he is, and always remember, if it wasn't for the Father, I wouldn't have anything. If it wasn't for him, I wouldn't even be alive. If it wasn't be for the Father, I wouldn't even have any possessions. Yeah. Saying, and it seemed there's nothing wrong with possessions and gifts and talents and having nice things and all that. But when those things take the place of our adoration and our awe and our gratitude for who gave that to us, then we lose our focus. And our focus should always be that we never forget who our father is, who we belong to, how much he loves us. So true worshipers, it says, Jesus said, will worship the father in spirit and in truth. So Jesus is saying a true worshiper will number one, worship the father. That means worship him and adore him, look to him, focus on him. And in a spirit, and the word spirit there means in an attitude. So it means that you're going to have an attitude of gratitude. An attitude is made up of what you believe, how you think, how you value, and how you express. That's what an attitude is. How you think, how you value, how you express. So the more you have an understanding and revelation of God, and the more you accept that and you have an attitude based on that it releases an expression through you to god so when i have a right attitude it means that even if i'm having a difficult day or my issues aren't going right that day i know this i can still make a choice to say father i still know you love me father i still know you're with me and i choose despite my feelings and my thoughts, I choose to think how good you are, how much you love me. So that keeps your attitude right, even in a difficult time. Now, there's always going to be times we can be frustrated, we can maybe be angry, we can be despondent, maybe we've said something that we shouldn't say. But in the middle of that, we can still choose through the grace of God and through the revelation of knowing that God still loves me, despite what I said or did. See, when you still have that revelation, that revelation will create an attitude in you to supersede and take you out of what you did or I did wrong. See, worship is not about what you do right or do wrong. Worship is about choosing to have an attitude of thanks and revelation that the father still loves me and he's still with me and he still will take up my cause um, you know the bible says in psalms uh, david would write this type of stuff he said in psalm 18 in my distress i called upon the lord and i cried out to god and he heard my voice it doesn't say oh he rejected him oh i don't <laughs> want to hear him because he's down there. No, it says that in his distress, I cried out to the Lord. You know why David did that? Because he knew the Father still loved him. And we're going to talk about David a lot today. But one of the key revelations of worship is knowing how much the Father loves you. When we understand that love, that love will keep us in all kinds of times of difficulty. And so he said, he heard his voice and my cry came before him even to his ears. Listen to me, God's ears are always open to you no matter where you're at. That's the kind of father we serve. And the more you see the father for who he is, 
and have revelation, it will absolutely disarm fears. It'll disarm shame. It'll disarm uh, hurt. It'll disarm, it'll disarm unworthiness because all the things that God says about himself and who he is, once we understand that he's merciful, he's kind, he's gracious. Um, I love uh, this one psalm. I was reading it last night. It's so good. It says um, that David said, out of the depths, I have cried to you, Lord. Yeah. Out of the depths of my situation. And, and, and it says, Lord, hear my voice. Let your ears be attentive to the voice of my supplication. And then he says, if you, Lord, would mark my iniquities, who could even stand before you? Who could even stand before the Lord if he kept a record of our iniquities? Yeah. But see, the Lord doesn't keep a record of our iniquities because that's how the Father is. And then he says, um, but there is forgiveness with you that you may be honored. I will wait for the Lord. My soul waits. And in his word, I hope. So I want to share this with you today, that the Lord is always there for you. He's always reaching out to you. And he's always loving you. And he's always ready to be gracious to you. Even in your most difficult or my most difficult time. And one thing we have to make sure is that we don't let our hearts, our thoughts, get in the way of who God is. And so we want to thank God for that. And, you know, the Bible says God loves a cheerful giver. I'd like to share with you, God loves a cheerful worshiper. Yeah. And it says that, you know, we enter his gates with thanksgiving. And, and today, I'm just praying that the joy of the Lord, uh, no matter where you are or what situation you might be facing, I want you to have the revelation that your Heavenly Father is for you, He loves you, and He has taken up your cause. Thank you, Lord. And He is worthy to be worshipped, worthy to be praised, and we just need to give Him that thanks. Thank you, Lord. And so we give you praise for that, Lord. And so the Bible says that, again, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Isn't that amazing? So the Father is looking for true worshipers. Then he's looking for people to seek him. So you know the Father is up there in a posture of loving you so much. He's seeking you before you seek him. Which is amazing to me. So the Father first, does, first loved us before we loved him. And he first, first sought after us before we seek him. And what he's saying, the same way I seek you, I want you to seek me. So the Father loves you so much and me so much that he's seeking for us to worship him. You know why? Because he knows if we don't seek him and worship him in and of ourselves, we will never have the fullness and the joy of all that God is. And today, I want you to know the Father not only loves you, he's seeking you out. The Bible says his eyes are going to and fro. Can I find somebody that will seek me and hang out with me right now and just spend some time with me and enjoy me Amen. and forget all the stuff that's going on around them. Forget all the hassle, all the issues, and just take some time and just come up here with me and draw near to me. The Father's seeking you. So yeah. today I want you to know the Father longs for you. He seeks you. He loves you all the time. His love is never ending. It's eternal. You serve a father who is love and he loves you. He loves you with all of his heart and he loves you with everything. You know, we just have to really get that revelation this morning. Even when I mess up, when you mess up, I don't care where you've come from, what you have did up till today, you can never change God's love for you. And the Lord seeks you every day because he doesn't want you to do this life by yourself. Thank you were not made to be alone. Hallelujah. You have a father. You have a husband. You have somebody that cares for you deeply and will never leave you and never forsake you. Whew, that's exciting. Yeah. And we're only on the first verse. <laughs> But it says, for the Father is seeking such to worship him. Who? True worshipers have a revelation of who he is. And it says, so God is spirit. So God is spirit. And those who worship him 
must worship him in spirit and in truth. So we're going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about how to worship him in spirit and in truth. So what is truth? Truth is the revelation of knowing who God is, who the Father really is. And so we're going to talk about that. In Hebrews 4, I want to share this with you to start here. It says, let us therefore come boldly to the throne of grace. Come boldly to the throne of grace that we may obtain mercy and find grace and help in our time of need. Yeah. And here's the key. And everybody stops. That's the great verse, but it don't stop there. Here's the key to the verse that connects it together for us. In Hebrews 5.1, it says, For every high priest taken from among men is appointed for men in things pertaining to God, that he may offer both gifts and sacrifices for sins. So what we're seeing here is Jesus Christ has gone before us. He came from heaven, humbled himself, took on a body to become like us. And then he went to the cross, was crucified, took our sin upon us, made us righteous, and took us with him to heaven to seat in heavenly places. And there he is right now seated there. But he's not only there seated with us and for us and as us, but he's also the high priest that is before the Father, at the right hand of the Father, representing us. And a priest, so you and I understand, the Bible says when we were born again and came into the kingdom and Jesus Christ came into our spirit and made us one with the Father, we became, the Bible says, a kingdom of priests. A kingdom of priests. I love that word, kingdom of priests. And we're going to talk why kingdom is so important. So what is a priest? So we have to define. Let's get the revelation of what is a priest. A priest is one that God created and made that has the ability to go before the Father and, and, and take a person before the Father and represent them before the Father. And also, he can represent, a priest can represent man. So a priest is a go-between between the Father and man. So Jesus Christ became our high priest, our go-between. He went between us and God. We couldn't get to God because we were in sin. So Jesus came and came from the Father God to us to take us back to the Father because we couldn't get there on our own. Yeah. So Jesus came and took our sin and removed it at the cross through his blood and gave us his righteousness. That's called the great exchange. And as, as our priest, he went with that up to the Father, and now he sits at the right hand of the Father. And so what he means here, he's our high priest. So what it means, Jesus Christ, even on his forehead up in heaven, uh, all the priests in the, in the scripture had a band across their head. It says, holiness unto the Lord. So Jesus Christ represents us before the Father, and when the Father sees us, he first sees Jesus. So he looks at Jesus, and you know what he sees? He sees us as holy, because Jesus is holy. See, we don't have to try to make ourselves holy, because Jesus is our representative. So when a Father looks at Jesus, he sees us as holy. You know what else he sees? He doesn't see our sin. He sees us righteous. See, that's how he sees us all the time. The Father sees us through Jesus as our high priest. So because Jesus has been accepted by the Father and has no sin, and we're in him and he's in us, then the Father, when he looks at us, sees Jesus and we're accepted because of Jesus. Because Jesus was obedient, we are obedient because of him. So Everything we do, everything we say, when it gets to the Father, Jesus Christ takes it and presents it to the Father for us. So we're always accepted. We're always loved. We're always holy before the Father because the high priest Jesus represents us for us and as us. And that's how the Father sees us all the time. And that, so all the other thoughts that come into your mind that, Oh, I shouldn't be worshiping. 
I shouldn't be praising uh, if I did this or I did that. Who am I to even come into God's presence? Well, it's not because of what you did that got you into God's presence. It's because of what Jesus did. That's what gets us into God's presence because of what Jesus did before us. And because of what Jesus did for us and what he's done in us, that gives us the right and the privilege to respond in love. Even when we've messed up, we, we aren't to stay there. We should, we're to quickly say, Lord, I'm sorry. And right away say, thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord. You're yeah. a good father. You're a kind father. You love me. You always love me and you will love me. That's how you worship. That's how you praise. That's what the father seeks. He doesn't seek for you to keep complaining about your problem. <laughs> See, the more you complain about your problem, the more you're putting yourself at odds. That's not what the father wants, but we put ourselves in a place of separation by what we do with our words. So the next big thing about worship is what comes out of your mouth. Words like, Lord, I love you. Lord, I bless you. Lord, I praise you. Lord, you're my father. Lord, you're my friend. Lord, you're my savior. You're my healer. You're my baptizer. You are Lord. You are savior. Then you start telling who he is. Yeah. When you worship, you're telling the father who he is. If you don't know who he is, then, and you don't have the revelation of who he is, it can hinder how much you can really worship. Right. That doesn't mean you can't worship, but when we learn that he is our savior, he is my father, he is my friend, he is my supply, he is my source, he is my everything. He is king. He is Lord. And I want to share about kingship for just a minute. The Bible says we were born again and delivered into the kingdom of God's dear son. So we were delivered out of the darkness and the world and the kingdom of the enemy. And we were put into the kingdom of God's dear son. And so we are now in a place we, we are in a citizenship of heaven. And the one who rules over us is a king. And so let's think about what a king is. A king is a ruler. He has a territory. He has subjects of people who uh, are with him. Uh, they live in a country. Uh, they live in a certain domain and they have a culture. And let me tell you, Jesus is the king of the culture we live in. We live in a heavenly culture on earth. Yeah, we're on earth, but we have a heavenly culture. It's a culture of love. It's a culture of joy. It's a culture of peace. It's a culture of, of a king that will always be there for us. Now, when you go into a place where there's a king, the first thing you're going to do when you see a king is you're going to bow down before him. Not because you're... Uh, in fear because you're in love and ex and you recognize without him i have nothing but with him because of him everything i have is because of him you recognize his kingship and you bow before him and one of the great things that uh, i've learned about uh, worship is that i want to always be in a position of surrender and humility never forgetting that jesus is the king of my life. He is the one that gave me everything I have. Yeah. He is my Lord. He is my King. I want to be in a face down posture in my attitude all the time. Remember we read that Jesus said, you worship him in spirit and in truth. Well, we in spirit means that I have a, a posture or an attitude of I'm in a humility, surrender and all and thanksgiving. When I see the King, the Bible says we're to kiss the king, we're to worship the king, prostrate before the king. I remember when uh, the Lord appeared to Joshua and he came to Joshua and he said, who are you? And I'm not worthy and all that kind of thing. But the Bible says that he fell on his face, face down, and he worshiped him. And many times David would be face down in his worship. Yeah. And the reason they were face down is because it was a position of, humility and thanks and awe and just like 
the king is here, the king of all kings I am connected to. He is worthy. I honor, I bless, I surrender, I yield, I bow, I humble myself before him because without him, I am nothing. But he is my king. He is my Lord. So when you understand that he's king, it creates an attitude, a posture of that. I call it having a face down attitude all the time. Everywhere I am, all day long, I never forget I am a subject to the king. And everything I have is because of the king. Everywhere I go, I keep reminding myself, thank you, Lord, for bringing me here. Thank you, Lord, for where I am. Thank you, Lord, I can be here. Everywhere in, in your work, in your school, whatever you're doing, you're always aware that the king is with you. And you're always living a life of adoration and wonder and thanksgiving. Thank you, Lord, for your goodness. Thank you that, thank you, that you gave me this job. Thank you, Lord, for the people I work with. Thank you because of you, Lord, I can be here. All the time, you stay in that attitude of thanksgiving, that attitude of worship. So worship is not just being still before the Lord. We'll get into that. Worship is in an attitude of continually being aware and choosing to think good things about the Lord in distress, in despair, at your work, in your marriage, in your home, with your kids, when everything is rocking and rolling and you're busy and things are going haywire and everything is trying to cause you to think about this. And we're made to think. We're made to think. God made us to think and feel. But in the middle of those thoughts, you can choose to change your thoughts. Yeah. When you're in the middle of a difficult thought, have another thought. Think about the Lord. <laughs> Think about what God's done for you. That's what is so exciting. So we have a high priest that's continually standing before the Lord, representing us. And we have to be aware that because we have that go-between for us, no matter where we are, Jesus is always praying. He's always lifting us up to the Father. He's always reminding the Father how much he is saying to us, Father, they love you, I love them, and they love you. Isn't it awesome to think that the Jesus is saying to the Father, Dan loves you, Sarah loves you. She, isn't it awesome just to be thinking of that? Yeah. He's doing that all the time. And we're down here complaining and all that, but you know what? Dan loves you, Father. Dan really loves you. He's saying to that, while well, we're saying other stuff, Jesus is still being our advocate, still being our intercessor, still being our priest, and offering up for us love to the Father even when we don't. So how awesome is that love for us? Isn't that amazing? Yeah, it's making me cry. Doesn't it make you want to cry? It is making me cry. That the Lord <laughs> is standing there for us even when we're not doing what we're supposed to do. That's how much God loves you and plan for you to be there. I just want to take a minute and say to everybody how much we love you. Yeah. And how much, you know, the Bible says we as your leaders, we're to be praying for you. Mm -hmm. and, and I just want to show you a perfect example. So if you're having a difficult day, we, want, we might not know everything. Let's say it's Wednesday and you're having something happen at your job or something came to you or you read something on the news or you heard the pandemic's going to get worse. It could be anything. And it tries to come in and crowd you down. All right, well, you need to know you're not alone. Yeah. First of all, the Holy Spirit's praying for you during that. Jesus Christ is praying for you as a priest. And thirdly, we're praying for you as your leaders. You know what we're doing? We're saying, every day we're saying, Father, we, we thank you for the people that you know. We thank you, Lord, that you're providing for them. We thank you, Lord, that you love them. We thank you, Lord, right now that you're taking up their cause. And wherever they're at and whatever they're doing, Lord, we just thank you right now that they love you. And we just thank you, Lord, that they want to praise you, that they're praisers, they're worshipers. We thank you, Lord, that they are your people, that you love them and we love them. So we're in there doing that. So you have all this going for you because God loves you. Yeah. And God 
lets us know how much he loves you first. He, he lets us know how much he loves you. And when we feel his love for you, yeah. it makes us want to Cry. love you and <laughs> pray and say things to God because we can feel his love for you. And because we can only get a touch of that love, can you imagine how great the Father's love is for you? And so, and I know you pray for us. And I know that you, I think about us, I hope so, in a good way. So together, when we come into that revelation of this amazing love, it's amazing what God can do. Now, I want to go, because of time, I want to make sure I get some of these points out. I want you to go with me to Isaiah 43, and we're going to just do a few more scriptures today, and we'll share. How are we doing so far? Is this good? Everybody enjoying it? Can I get an amen? Or amen. <laughs> a, a hand wave? or That's a good. All right. Look at this. Isaiah 43, 21. Here's how God says, This people, you and I, I have formed for myself. Now listen, when God made you and I and created us, he formed you for himself. Not just for us. He, he formed you and I. This is the emphasis I want you to get today. Worship is not so much about us. We'll get to that. Worship is all about him. It's all about focusing on him. He's seeking us to worship him because he says, I formed you for myself. So God loved you so much that he formed you for himself because he enjoys you and loves you so much he wants to be with you. And it says, and they shall declare my praise. So in other words, God is saying, not only did I form you for myself, I made you to declare my praise. So God said, I made you in my image and my likeness, and I made you to give me praise. I made you to enjoy me. What, what praise really is, is adoring and enjoying and loving who God is. That's what praise is. It's you're so excited about his love for you and how much he loves you. You're so excited how much he's always there for you. You're so excited that he will never leave you or forsake you that you just want to praise him. And you want to praise him first for who he is, that he's your father, he's your friend, he's your savior, he's your healer, uh, he's your baptizer, he's your supply, he's your source. Uh, he sees to it when you're in trouble. I'm your ever-present time. I'm in your ever-present need in time of trouble. And when you are in trouble, come boldly to me. Don't shrink back. Don't be afraid. I'm not going to cast you out. Don't let the devil tell you you're not worthy anymore. You shouldn't even go there. No, no. It's not what the devil says or what you say. It's what the Father says about you. And the Father says to you, come boldly to me at all times. Don't shrink back. Don't pull back. Come boldly, run to me. Draw near to me. And I will draw near to you. And I'll draw near to you. I won't cast you out. But you don't know, Pastor Dan, what I've done. You don't know, Dan, the stuff that I... I don't care what you've done. There's no greater sin than before you were saved and you still were loved by God and he still drew you to you. If he drew to you then, how much more? The Bible says in Romans, well, you can go to him now. How much more can you go to him? That's not an excuse for sin, but it's also a, an understanding that God values and loves me more than my mistakes or my sins. And the more you love God anyway, and the more you praise him, the less sin will rule your life. Yeah. I'm telling you right now, the more you start to praise God on a daily basis, things will start to drop off of you. You'll get the revelation that God loves me so much, I won't even want to do some of that stuff anymore. I mean, um, I wrote a thing down in my notes um, here uh, last night. I said, uh, when I really love God and I really know what he's done for me, it will lead to an action. It will cause me to have an attitude of wonder and a, an attitude of expectation. And um, it'll cause me to be changed because when I praise him and I don't feel worthy and I, I glorify him when I've done something wrong, there's something powerful that happens. He comes down into my situation 
and he changes my thoughts and causes me uh, to let those things drop off. Because when I, when I worship him and exalt him and focus on him instead of what I did, that focus starts to cause me to forget those other things. Because the Bible says, uh, as we praise him and as we worship him, it, it says his presence will cause things to melt like wax that are around us. So even your fears, your doubts, your insecurities, all these things we all face, they were melt in the presence of the Lord. The fire in the presence of God will melt thoughts in your life and burn them up and throw them out. Thank you. Hallelujah. You can't do that on your own. <laughs> don't try to do it on your own. Don't try to figure your life out on your own. Don't try to figure out, well, how can God forgive me? You can't figure that out. It's not even logical. But he says, trust me. Trust in my revelation. Trust in my truth. My truth will keep you free from guilt and shame and condemnation. And here's the truth. The Bible says when you praise him and you worship him, his presence will mount the mountains of anxiety, worry, and fear, and doubt will melt in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel the presence of God right now. Me too. I feel his presence. How about you? Yep. You know, when, uh, when you go to a sporting event, and I, <laughs> I just talk to men for a minute. No, that's not fair. And women. <laughs> when you go to a sporting event, and hopefully it won't be the Phillies right now. But <laughs> don't watch the Phillies. But when you go to an event where a team is taking the final drive in football and you know there's only two minutes left, you have a, a, an anticipation and an excitement and, and it's for the winning score. There's something inside of you, a confidence when you have a team that you know is a winner that they're going to somehow win the game. So what happens is when we know Jesus Christ is a winner, he won the victory, he defeated Satan, he defeated sin, he won the victory. When you have a revelation in you that he is a winner, I'm connected to a winner, I identify with a winner, that's my king, that's my Lord, that's who I'm connected to. When you have that inside, there's something inside your thought life and your attitude that causes you to somehow know, I don't care how difficult this problem is, I don't care how difficult the situation is, I know there's only two minutes left in the game, I know we're losing right now, but somehow I know that I am connected to a proven winner, and somehow what looks like it's meant for evil, I have the knowing that it's still going to turn out for good, and we are going to score and win this game. Yeah. And you know what? You have a, that creates a freedom in you, an excitement in you. And you know what happens to people when they're connected to a winner? They have expectation. And they expect we're going to win this game. And they get excited. And they're, they're come on, let's go. We're winning this game. And it, as you, and it just builds and it builds. And the closer you get to the goal line, the more you even get more excited. Then all of a sudden, Touchdown! And then when you see, and you're, and that's where you're in the middle of. Thank you, Lord. I know who you are. I knew you'd bring me through. I knew you would get me out of this. I thank you, Lord. No matter what weapon comes against me, I knew I was going to prosper. I knew we were going to win. I knew you were going to bring me through. And at that point, when you have that victory, you don't care what anybody thinks. When you look at an Eagles game. And for the Abrahams, a Steelers game. Whenever you're at any of those games, at, out of the Steelers, they're going to wave them one of those funny yellow towels. They're going to go. They don't care what anybody thinks because they know they're winners and they're connected to a winner, a winning team. And that's when you. And that's when you're free. And when you're really a strong worshiper, you don't care what anybody thinks about you. You're excited. You just have to put your hands up. Yep. You have to be excited because you're free to worship. And the Lord says, come to me the way you are and let it out because you're connected to a champion, a winner. And I call you champions. Yeah. That's exciting. It's very exciting. Hallelujah. You know, people in the world, they don't get all like, oh, wow, I'm going to paint. They don't care what people think of them because they're connected and excited 
about the winner they're connected to. And how much more excited should we be excited about Jesus? We should be waving our towels, putting our hands in the air, just being free because of all God's done for us. Let's take a minute, put our hands up, say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Wave your hands and say, Lord, we are connected to a winner. We're connected and I don't to care where I'm at. We are worry. winning. We we're are winning because we're connected to a winner. We're connected Hallelujah, to a winner. Lord, Hallelujah, Lord, for your victory. We have the victory you, today. Lord. Let Hallelujah. everybody, Shikha let the Papa. redeemed of the Lord say, say so. so. I Shikha. am blessed. I am free. I am called, chosen. And I am loved by my Father. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, Jesus. Praise you, Lord. Praise you. Amen. Love you, Lord. Bless you. I could go on for that another 20 minutes. Whew, glory. All right. So that's what we've been made to do. We're connected to a winner. And no matter where we are, we are going to get the touchdown. Hallelujah. All right, let's finish out. So Galatians 4, and then I want to hit... Uh, Psalm 63 to end, and we'll stop there today. All right, I could preach on this stuff for like five weeks, because <laughs> we can. But you know, I think I'm going to do a part two to this. Maybe yeah. not next week, uh, but in a couple weeks. This is good. But because, but, but there's so much to, because worship is so amazing when you understand it. When you have the revelation of your father, the revelation of your friend. He's the friend that sticks closer than a brother. Then you say, "What can man?" David said. What can man do to me? I got my father. You can't take him. As long as the father's on my side, if the Lord's on my side, what can man do to me? And I want to tell you, the Lord's on your side today. You're not alone. You have the Lord on your side. You got the father on your side. You got the Holy Spirit. You have us. You have each other. And you have other friends that we don't even know, I'm sure. But I just want to finish this out. Let's go to this verse, Galatians 4, 6. And because you are, I love this, because you are sons or part of his family, God has sent forth the spirit of his son into your heart, crying out, Abba, Abba Father. Father. You see that? Even when you're not praising, and this is what I wanted to get. Now, first we talked about Jesus. He's up there representing us and speaking for us when we're not speaking. But here we have the Holy Spirit, and the Holy Spirit's inside of your spirit all the time, crying out, Abba, Father, for you. Yeah. Isn't that amazing? Amazing. The Holy Spirit saying, Father, Father, even when we are mouths are shut, we have the Holy Spirit speaking on our behalf. We have Jesus speaking on our behalf, and we should be so grateful and so thankful. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you speak to the Father for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you cry out for me. Thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are always representing me to the Father. You are amazing. I thank you. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So that's what I wanted to share there. So let's finish out with um, just a couple more things. Let's go to Psalm 63. And let's look at this passage. And I could have picked out a different passages, but, but today I wanted to get this one because to me, this is one of the greatest scriptures to help us. And the reason I love this, this is when David was being chased down and he's out in the desert and he's being chased down and he's in a real difficult place and he's in a place where he could have just gone right down into despair and depression and everything in his mind was saying, you know, God, I, I'm trying to do what you told me to do. You anointed me as king and look, what I'm, look what's happening. You anointed me and I'm being chased down by the enemy chased down by somebody that just is trying to get all kinds of things uh, that he's trying to get me for that I didn't do. And so he had all kinds of thoughts probably in his mind. He was probably very distraught. Yeah. But here's what he writes in the middle of that. Now watch David's heart. Oh God, you are my God. Yeah. Early I will seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and thirsty land. So see, he's in a land right now yeah. where around him, everything is dry. There's nothing happening. He's in deep despair. But in the middle of that, he says, but God, you're still my God. Yeah. I'm still going to seek you first. 
right, it's right. The first thing I'm going to do is seek you. Now, here he's using it in the morning or early, but I would just like to say, I like to say, in the beginning of stress or pain or despair, or in a case where he's in a desert, early means the first thing I need to do is seek you, because if I don't, I'm going to start looking at my environment, my culture, my problem, my issues, everything. I'll start thinking too much about that. And instead of seeking that, seeking you early, I'll seek that and I'll find that and that will wrap me up and hold me back. So early. So what he's saying is I need to make a concerted effort to say, God, you're still my God right off the get go when I'm in a problem. In my deepest hurt, my deepest chaos, my deepest situation, betrayal, whatever you're in, you got to early, you got to say, God, you're still God. My soul thirsts for you because I need, my thoughts really need you. My body is wretched out with pain, but it's longing for you because there's no other way to get relief, I know, apart from you. It's dry, it's thirsty, there's no water around me. I, there's nothing in the natural that's satisfying me to help me right now, but I know you are. So then it says, so I look for you in the sanctuary to see your power and your glory. Now, some people think, oh, David must have been thinking about, he's going to look for God over in the building in the sanctuary where we are the temple. That's not what he's talking about. He's saying, I'm making this desert a sanctuary. Yeah. That's what he's saying. I'm in the middle of a desert. So I'm going to create a sanctuary right here. I'm going to look for you and you're going to show up and make this desert a sanctuary instead of a desert. That's what you're going to do for me. You're going to change the atmosphere because of my love and my worship for you. So I want you to know you can have a sanctuary anywhere you are. Amen. Worship is not limited to a position or a church building. And that's what Jesus said way back in the beginning. Worship is not limited to any space. It's, it can be available at any place. It's not limited to space. It's available in any place. So he's saying you can make a sanctuary in your car, sanctuary in your job, <laughs> sanctuary in your problem, a sanctuary in the shower, a sanctuary wherever you go, yeah. whatever you enjoy out on the golf course. If you're swinging a golf club, that can be your sanctuary because wherever you go, God can go with you and make that place a place where you can still give God thanks. See, it doesn't take much to give God thanks continually in everything we do. Just take a few minutes and continue. I do this all the time. I'm always making uh, anything I'm in. I'm always thanking God. Thank you, Lord, for that. I have, uh, Pastor Sarah likes peppers. She loves red peppers, right? <laughs> so whenever I cut the peppers up, you know, at first it's like, oh, brother, I got to cut these peppers like this. And, so I'm cutting these peppers away, and I know she likes them a little small. So I'm cutting them up, making sure I do the lines right and all that. So so I'm there cutting the peppers, and, and the Lord says to me one day, it'd be a good time right now to give me thanks. I said, good idea. Said, Don't complain. Just thank you, Lord, for these peppers. Thank you that you created these peppers. And thank you that Sarah loves these peppers. And thank you that she eats these peppers. She'll be nicer to me. So, so, so. They were really good. <laughs> so, but I'm here to tell you, bring the Lord into everything. Bring him into your peppers. Bring him into your cooking. Keep thanking the Lord for everything you have. Yeah. Turn everything around. Just make everything you do a sanctuary. That's what David's saying. He's saying in the worst of times, bring in sanctuary. You can always even say, thanks, God, you're my God. And whatever I have in your job, say, thank you, God, for this job. Yeah. Even when things are going haywire and, you know, the boss is getting mad at you or he says something. Thank you, Lord, that you're still with me. Thank you for this job. Even if it don't make any sense, keep thanking God. Keep giving God praise and glory. You watch what God will do. God, you're still my God. You're with me. What's this guy going to do to me? You got, as long as I got you, I'm fine. Thank you, Lord. Then it says you looked in the sanctuary to see your power yeah. and your glory. So what happened when he started praising and worshiping God, God's power showed up in the desert and God's power started to transform his thought life. God's power started to have him see things differently. He didn't see the desert or being chased down anymore. He saw the glory of God, that God was going to protect him, that God was going to bring his goodness, 
that God was going to come in the middle of that desert and refresh him and bring him joy where there was no joy in the natural. Bring him, uh, uh, he's going to revive him in the middle of a desert where there's no water because God's going to be his water. And then it says in verse three, because your loving kindness, this is one of I my favorite this. verses in all the Bible and where we're going to camp one before we finish, because your loving kindness is better than life. And here's what David said. I don't care what life dishes to me. I don't care what life does to me. I don't care what people do to me, circumstances do to me, no matter what life hands me. You know, you hear that uh, statement, <laughs> if life gives you a lemon, you know, make lemonade out of it. But, but, but really, here's the deal. David says, your love for me is so great. Your kindness is so great for me. It's, it's more important to me than anything life can do to me or even offer me either way. No matter what life can do to me or what it can give me, it will never compare to your love for me. And your love for me is greater than anything in this life. And because I know you love me, that means more to me than any my lips will praise you. Yeah. I will praise you continually because you never stop loving me. And your love is so great for me. It's better than anything that life could ever do for me. Anything. Yeah, life, it could be good or life can be bad. But whether it's good or bad, nothing compares to your love for me. And because you love me, that's all that matters. And I want to tell you something. Um, when I wrote this down in my notes today, uh, Let's see where do I have that right here um, when David had that revelation of knowing God's love for him it says that um, it caused David to see the greatness of God when you know how much God loves you it starts to bleed over into God you're great you're awesome you are absolutely great because you love me so much and you really love me and when David felt that he started to get into this depth of love. When you feel you're deeply loved by God, yeah. it causes you to be a passionate worshiper. Can I say it like that? When you know you're deeply loved by God, you just have to love God. Yeah. You just have to give praise to him and you have to say thank you, God. You, there's something about when you know how much God loves you, you just have to open your mouth and, and praise him and worship him and love him and thank him because he loves you so much. Uh, and, and what God, I guess this is the thing I think, when David sinned in his worst state, and we know he messed up really bad, there's something about David that he had a trust in the love of God that got him through those circumstances that even in the old covenant, God had mercy on him when he deserved death. <laughs> David deserved death in the old covenant for what he did adultery murder I mean he deserved to be death but God saw how much David passionately understood his love for him that God just couldn't allow David to get the consequence he deserved yeah. he was merciful to him because of David's deep love for him and David got to the place where he had such trust in the love of God. It gave him this authority and this power. That's how he defeated Goliath. The reason he defeated Goliath wasn't just because he threw the stone at him. It was because he knew how much God loved him. And because God loved him so much and he, he felt the love of God so strong in him, it caused this power to come through him. And it just destroyed everything around him. Because of the, so David's love for God and God's love for David became so strong that that created an absolute bond that destroyed wickedness, sin, enemies. So I wanna ask you today, do you feel loved by God? Do you know God loves you? How much do you deeply know God loves you? And today I want you to know your father loves you deeply. He really loves you and he will never stop loving you. And I pray today, if you get that understanding, of the love God has for you. Nothing compares to that. And then lastly, when David would pray or seek God, he would always say, God, thank you so much for your love for me. Thank you how much you love me.
He would just continually talk about his love. I know you love me. I, I, I've experienced your love. Yeah. I, I know you love me. You've brought me through every calamity because you love me and you're for me. And then finally, David said, your love is so great. I just want to start to write. That's why he wrote all the Psalms. Yeah. He wrote the Psalms out of his experience of God's love for him. Then he would write these Psalms that we read. I mean, like, here we go. He says, um, as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is proven. He is a shield to all who trusted him. Just think of how David's writing this because he said, I know you love me. And not only do you love me, you're a shield because I trust you. And then he says, for who is God except the Lord? I mean, who else can take the place of his love? Nothing. And then he goes, and he's my rock. It is God who arms me with strength. And he makes my way perfect. See, when you love God and you know God's love for you, he'll make your way perfect, even when it's imperfect or mine's imperfect. Yeah. God will perfect that which concerns you. Let me tell you, when you worship or I worship, the Lord starts changing everything around you. He changes your thoughts. He changes people. He changes your problem. He changes the atmosphere. He changes everything for you. You know, uh, when Sarah and I pray, you know, in the morning, every morning we get up. And then like David, and we know that David sought the Lord early in the morning. I'll tell you somebody else who sought the Lord. <laughs> uh, see, Sarah thought I was going to say her. But, I, <laughs> but Jesus sought the Father early in the morning. In Mark 1, it says, he would come apart and seek the Father early in the morning. Amen. Now, that doesn't mean you have to seek him early in the morning. But there is something about seeking him early yeah. in the morning. So when we first start the day out, the first thing we want to do is seek him, wait upon him, and express to him, Lord, good morning, we love you. And thank you for your love for us. Thank you for who you are. Thank you that you are our father. You are father. You are friend. You are ever-present help in time of need. Today we come boldly to your throne of grace because you love us and we know you love us and Lord help us to love you and love each other help us to love the way you love us we pray that every day and the more we understand the love of God the Bible says we can't even understand it in our natural but pray for it ask for it Lord thank you for revealing to me how much you love me yeah. show me how much you love me your love is better than life. So when you understand that, how much God loves you, I wrote this down. God loves you so much because God has done great things in our lives. Our only natural response can be, Lord, we give you our whole life. Yeah. Because you've done so much. You love us so much. All we can do is just respond and say, we give you our whole life. So every morning you say, Lord, I... I want to respond to your love by loving you and say, here's my life. You can have it. And I worship you. And I thank you. So, so worship is a whole life response. That's what it is. Yeah. In every area of your life, you're just responding all the time. It's not just in a position. It's good to find a place to worship and spend time alone. That's for sure. But it's an all day. It's all day long. It's not limited to a, just all day long, just keep, thank you, Lord, I worship you. Just take time to thank him. Look, we're thinking all day, but put thoughts of worship in there all day long. All day long, make it everyday worship. I call it everyday lifestyle worship. That's what we got to do. So I think that's as far as I can go today because of time. But um, I just want to share that I just praise God for the power of worship. And there's way more we could talk on this. And I think I'll do that in September. One more. We'll do a second, second one on this. And in that one, I'm going to talk about the benefits of worship. 
because today I didn't get as much into that, but there's a lot there. Uh, but what I want to do today is I want um, all of us to just take a minute is and say, Lord, we want to understand more and more how much you love us. Lord, show us your love. And the more, Lord, that we understand how deeply you love us, the more we will respond and not be afraid. We won't be afraid to come to your throne of grace boldly because your love is so deep for us that we just want to respond back and tell you, thank you for loving me. Thank you for keeping me. Thank you for choosing me. Lord, I surrender my whole life to you. And thank you, Lord, for your love for me. I must tell the Lord 50 times a day, thank you, Lord, for how much you love me. And I don't think he ever gets tired of it. Yeah. Lord, I know I messed up, but I know you love me and I know you're with me. Right here in the middle of my work, it's been a tough day. But Lord, thank you that you love me. You're with me. Thank you, Lord. And Lord, you're changing my situation right here in the middle of the desert. Thank you, Lord. And don't get all hung up on how you worship. Just let it out. God's more not looking how you do it. He's looking at your heart yeah. and your expression. You might do different than me, but the one thing we all can do is open our mouth and speak. Now in the middle of your job, you don't want to go around like throwing your hands all over the place, <laughs> but you can speak quietly to the Lord all the time. Stay in that attitude. Stay in that wonderment. Don't let the pandemic, the problems, the issue, the uncertainty, don't let that take the love that God has for you away. Don't do that. Choose to surrender and stay focused on who God is. He'll get you through. He will supply. It. And he's going to bring you through your situation. God's up there not freaking out over there. He knows what he's doing. And he's going to bring you out better than when we went in. But we have to maintain our worship. Stay focused on him. Stay focused on God. Don't focus on yourself as much. Like I have an issue sometimes. I get focusing on my problem or when I make a mistake or I have an issue come up. I start focusing on that. And the minute I focus too much on that, I forget to focus on him. Yeah. And he told me one day, and I got to finish right here. He said, Dan, worship is not about focusing on what you did wrong or you did right. It's all about focusing on me. Just focus on me. And I'll take care of all the rest. Focus on me. That's what worship is. Focus on my goodness. Focus on my love for you. That's what worship is all about. Thank you. So Father, we thank you today for the power of worship. And Lord, we got through some of this. I know there's more to go and we'll pick it up in another session in September. But this was great for part one. So I thank you today for your love for us. Thank you that we are all here because of you, because you loved us. For God so loved the world that he gave his son for us. And he came into our life and your spirit inside of us cries out, Abba, Father. Because we're no longer orphans or lost or we are your sons and daughters. We're in a family and we are loved. Thank you. And our response is we give you our whole life today. Thank you. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. And no matter where we are, what time of the day in our life, our job, our school, our kids, our family, problems, issues, we can always take the time to say, Father, 
I love you. Thank you for loving me, Father. Thank you that you're with me here, Father. Thank you that I'm not alone. Thank you, Lord, you're good. I worship you. Thank you that you're my healer. Yeah, my body's in pain, but Father, you're my healer. Thank you, I worship you. And let us not ever forget, just like the leper, the one leper came back and said, thank you. Let us never be ones that forget what you've done. Yes, we love you for who you are, but we also thank you and love you for what you've done for us. And we worship you. And let today start in us a whole new beginning of praise and worship and attitude and thankfulness as a lifestyle. In Jesus' name, amen. So we want to praise God today for that. And... Uh, I did want to share with you uh, how can I say this? I feel like as I was praying just right then that some people were being really healed of some emotional hurt and wounds in your soul that have tried to hold you back from freely being who God says you are and freely worshiping and it's tried to inhibit you. Yeah. And today, I just want you to know, I sense that the Lord is breaking you free of all those limitations and hurts. The Bible says when Paul was in prison, they started to sing and praise and the earth shook. And today, I just want you to know, as you start to praise God and worship him, and you know, even in singing, don't be concerned how your voice sounds. You can praise him. Just say, praise you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Just sing something out. But those little words of praise are not little to God. They will shake turmoil, stress, thoughts, weariness off your soul. Just opening your mouth to praise will break strongholds over your mind. Thank you. And today God's shaking and breaking strongholds, hurts, shame off of you. I want to tell you, habits can be broken through praise and worship. Yep. When you worship God, God will melt desires yep. off of you and give you desire for only him. He who delights in the Lord, he will give you the desire of his heart. See, when you start to delight, desire changes in you. The more you delight in the Lord and praise him, the less you will desire a habit. They can't coexist. You either desire one or the other. Eventually, you will desire because God will melt that desire as you desire and worship and praise him. Hallelujah. Thank you for that, Lord. Thank you. So anyway, we praise you, Lord, and I, I, I felt to share that. So uh, we have a couple of words. Before we uh, go, the, I did want to share one thing because uh, some people want to still understand the giving. So for our giving right now, for you want to give online, and we pray that you do because uh, our trust is in the Lord uh, and he is our supply. But for all of you, uh, we want you to be blessed. Mm -hmm. That's number one. And, and when you give, I wanted to say this, Giving is an act of worship as well. I wanted to put that yeah. as a PS for the giving. When you give God uh, what he's given you, and he owns everything we have, when you give him the seed or your tithe or your offering, when you give God back the first of what God's given you, you are saying to God, I worship you. Thank you for loving me to give me what I have. And when you obey God, when he says, give to me, first fruits of what you have. When you give that and you trust God, you're letting God know you trust him. And you say, thank you, Lord, for this. And you worship him and say, I give this unto you. And you know what? The Lord Jesus himself takes that and he presents it to the Father. Then the Lord turns right around and blesses you mm -hmm. and rebukes the devourer over your storehouse. 
and he speaks a blessing that's even greater than we could speak. It's all worship. That's why when we say to you, don't let the enemy take that. Don't let the world take your seed because they can't bless you like God can. That's why God says, give it to me and don't keep it. Worship with it. Yeah. And then I will take it and multiply it and bless you in all kinds of ways. So that's what is important. And the Bible says you, you should give where you're fed. And at the same time, we are not going to coerce you to do that, but we want you to be blessed. So I would encourage you to start worshiping the Lord with your giving. Do it joyfully. And God's done so much for Sarah and I with the giving, I mean, but, but you're going to be blessed. Let me tell you, God loves when we worship him. And you want to do it out of worship. Do it out of joy. Yeah. Don't do it out of fear. Do yeah, it because yeah. thank you, Lord. Without you, I wouldn't have anything. But with you, he will bless you. So to do your giving, if you want to give, you never given before, try it with worship. Just try it. And you go online. Just go to our website. You know, cherryhill.com, hit the give button and just pray about it. I want to see you. We want to see you really blessed and get free, free from the finances. Get free of that stuff. Your job's not your source. God is your source. This pandemic can try to hinder you, but God will have the final say. He can bring stuff to you that this world cannot produce. Amen. And he wants to do that. I mean, we could testify to you. We have seen <laughs> things show up to us and we don't even know how they come. <laughs> We've had people give online on Unite that we don't even know. <laughs> but God causes that. So we just praise God and thank God for his love for us, his love for you. And don't miss the blessing. Yeah. No, yep. Don't do it because I'm saying it. Do it for God. God loves you. He wants to bless you. He's seeking to bless you. See? Yeah. And see, if we don't seek him, then he's seeking for you. Just please give to me. He's seeking you. Just give to me. And I promise you, if you do that, I will absolutely rebuke the devour and speak a blessing over your storehouse. And I will cause things to come to you that you could never get in the natural. That's the Lord's promise. So that's what I wanted to share because that's an act of worship as well. So thank God for that. So if that's an encouragement to you, I hope it is today and, and just pray about it. But I believe if you will be obedient, God will do great things for you. Next week, I'm going to talk on the power of promise. The promises of God are so powerful when you understand what God's promised you and you start to receive them and believe them and expect for them, it will absolutely destroy all kinds of things. Lack, fear, doubt will go because mm -hmm. we understand the power of the promise. You won't be afraid of the future of the pandemic. We're going to really attack the future of that next week. We're going to talk about the power of promise next week. It's going to be powerful. I pray you'll be back on for that. Thanks for coming on today, all of you, too. I just, well, we just want to say to everybody today, this has been an awesome day today. Yeah. And thanks for all of you that keep coming on every week. It's just amazing. Thank you for your faithfulness. Uh, and we're even believing you're going to invite more friends next week for the power of promise. It's going to be Amen. really good. We really enjoyed today with you. And I pray all of you got encouraged today to start giving thanks and being aware of God more. Uh, I just hope just a little of this went a long way with both of you and all of you. So we praise God for every family that's on today. We bless every family. We thank God for every one of you. And may you have the best week. Don't yeah. listen to the news. Listen to God. Stay focused on him. We're aware of what's going on, but God's got a great plan for you. And we'll talk about that next week. God's promise. Next week, the power of promise. And what are the plans God has ahead? We'll talk about it. It's going to be exciting, and uh, we're expecting to see a great, great time next week. So be blessed, everybody. Thank you for being faithful. 
Thank you for your love, your support. May the Lord bless you and keep you, and may his spirit be with you all this week as you open the word and as you worship. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 All right.